Welcome back. It's two plus politics. We are moving straight to real political issue now. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has announced the date for the 2023 presidential election. INEC Chairman Professor Mahmoud Yakub stated that the 2023 presidential election is scheduled to hold on February 18, 2023. Yakub made the announcement at the inauguration of the House of Representatives Committee on Constitution Review. He called on the National Assembly to work fast on the review exercise ahead of the polls. Joining us to discuss this, uh, we are expecting, because we understand he's here to join us, uh, that's Ezenwa Mwago, who is a co-convener of Say No Campaign. And uh, we still have our own Amadine Uyi to also do justice to this discussion. Amadine, you know, the, 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 the first thing that should come to your mind before we look at the date is the experience we had in the build-up to the 2019 election where we couldn't have the constitution review signed by the president. And the president insisted that you cannot railroad me to signing this paper on time. So you remember the argument, it went back and forth. The, the lawmakers were accused of, why didn't you bring it on time? Why did you go on early day? when you could have brought it for the president to make necessary correction before signing. So are we likely to get the constitution review done and dusted before 2023? The uh, Senate uh, deputy president of the Senate, who always heads that uh, committee in the National Assembly, uh, Senator Ovi Omar Agege, had promised that this time the Senate will just try to uh, do whatever they can to ensure that, that, yes. Remember, just like you said, uh, in the build-up to the 2019 elections, the Electoral Act was uh, amended just a few months, I think less than, five, less, than, less than five months to the elections, and it was sufficient grounds for Mr. President to reject uh, signing that act into law. If you also try to look at the situation from his perspective. He, he, he brought up a very sound argument. Okay, you said you want electronic uh, voting, transmission of results. I sign it now, it was around uh, November, December, election was February. How long will it take for the commission to prepare? But go, that was why the election, we had to still hold it. So when this issue came of server, no server, INEX said, we are bound by the law. You cannot insist, bring out a point, and now insist on an illegality. Because according to the law, it's an illegality for INEC to do that. But what the commission has gone a step ahead. I know as of two weeks ago, INEC has started entertaining electro electronic voting machines from vendors, uh, vendors ahead of the polls. And going back memory lane, if you understand how election is held, the election is supposed to be held February 2023. Uh, throughout uh, 2022, there will be campaigns. In fact, government is all almost at a standstill. Considering the fact that Mr. President is not going to be coming out, is not eligible to come out as, uh, as required by law, by the Electoral Act and by the Constitution, he will not be able to put a stop to these campaigns. In the last election, he said, let, let me focus on governance. And I okay. will, yes, let me focus yeah, on we governance. We understand we have uh, Mr. Eisenhower back, I mean, now online. And uh, just like you said, I'm coming back to that because that applies to the president. What about the governors that will be going for second term? That's another conversation. Mr. Ezenwa, good evening. Good to have you. Good evening, Kyle. It's nice being with you again. Yeah, uh, my colleague here and I were having a discussion around 2019 and uh, why the president was not able to sign the Electoral Act. I mean, sorry, the Constitution Review, some of the amendments they made and he couldn't sign it. And it appears that they are heading in the right direction. Are we expecting a signing, knowing fully well that this time around, the presidency and the National Assembly seems to be having a good romance? No, um, Kay, the, the romance 
um, will be will be put up aside by interests. Um, it, the politics is governed around this environment by interest and not um, whether you belong to the same party. Um, in terms of the amendments that you're talking about, what we have seen is that um, there has been a conspiracy between um, the executive and the legislature in, in dealing with those things that improve the integrity of the election. And what is that? The, the, where you have issues around the amendment generally, whether from the perspective of the executive or the perspective of the legislature, has been the infusion of technology uh, into our elections. And that has been the kernel of the, the pushbacks that you see. The National Assembly will, will um, not follow process. And at the end of the day, they, they also know these laws. They know that there are international conventions that bind you to amend your laws before at least uh, three months of, I'm not sure now, six months or three months uh, to the election. So they wait and present a fire brigade situation, and then the president will happen on that and say, oh, you know, there are, there are typographical errors, there are uh, time issues, I'm not going to ascend. But the pressure should come. It, we, let us not take it for granted that because there seems to be some cordiality between the executive and the legislature, that they will do the right thing. Citizens um, and election enthusiasts, electoral um, uh, reform-minded um, media and civil society, and, and generally the citizens must put the pressure on the National Assembly to first and foremost understand that time is important. We should have started yesterday in the conversation about electoral reforms. It's not new that these constitutional reform issues, this, amend, this innovation that happened today at the National Assembly, uh, is not, it's not new that it, it's happened. But the, the food dragging, the lack of details, the lack of rigor that we have seen in the way the issue of electoral amendment has been handled by both the executive and the legislature can be solved by simply sitting in a room, the legislature and the executive sitting in one room and clearing out all the ambiguities, dotting all the, um, uh, the, the I's and crossing the T's before eventually the legislative uh, firework around them commence. At that level, there is already a consensus in, in gray areas, in areas that need to be resolved, so that when it eventually gets to the president, all this pushback that we have seen, not just in this um, um, in the life of uh, even the previous National Assembly, we will not see all that. If you if you recall, the President Jonathan signed a, 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 a um, uh, an electoral act in March of of um, in, in March of uh, 2015, and, okay. and that was almost when his tenure was was over. And even those who amended that constitution didn't know what was signed and what was not signed. So we need to put out all of those issues and see how we can have okay. a... Okay. Let, let, let's quickly look at uh, the, the... Okay, Edzenwa, let's look at the topical issue now, the announcement of the date for the presidential election. Uh, like I had a pre-conversation with you before this interview, why this is not new, but what we will see as new is sticking to the date. We've had... We have elections in some other climes where the date is even enshrined in their constitution. We know when American election will hold. And even when people express fear that oh, with the COVID, America is not likely to have that election. And you can see that they are already heading towards keeping to that rule. And we saw INEM making this attempt in the last election. But you guess what? That date never happened. So with the INEC announcing date this time around, What's the possibility that we can get it right? Once you leave uh, something as important as this to um, policy, uh, when it's a policy, then it is, it is open to change. It is open to... So part of the reforms that we seek also is to see how you can enshrine this in, in your laws in, in a way that guarantees... Uh, that this, this cannot be shifted except you have an amendment. But once it's a policy issue, 
uh, Kay, you can be rest assured that politicians will throw up all hoist regime of excuses why why those dates will not start. And sometimes they do that deliberately by withholding um, appropriation. If they withhold appropriation and the electoral management body is unable to um, source uh, electoral materials and the things they will need to conduct elections, uh, if, when you have vendors not uh, engaged on time or paid on time, then sabotage, like we saw in, in, in many of the past elections, will continue to play. So I, I just think that um, I, I think that we need to uh, first and foremost ensure that we take out uh, the question of. Wow. Okay, I, I think uh, the network is misbehaving again. We will come back to you, uh, Amadine. Something you has raised, and that brings me to the next thought. How? You know, do we ensure that some of this logistics, some of this budget for our electioneering is put on first line charge, not with uh, what a government feels like, what INEC needs now, and what INEC doesn't need? There should be some statutory amount that, irrespective of our pocket, irrespective of our budget, INEC should not be sabotaged. Now, uh, yes, it's good to talk about budgets. But remember that in a way that we are talking about budget, that uh, a lot deals with, uh, a lot still depends on that amended constitution. Because if you talk about budget, how can you uh, mobilize for an election? You don't even know whether you are going to uh, execute it via electronic voting or via the normal uh, manner. cumbersome uh, manner we have done in the past. You have how many political parties? Everybody wants to be on the ballot paper. So even for the voter, it kind of, get, it kind of gets confusing. But that's why uh, it's good that INEC has fixed a date for the election. But I think it is also apt that the National Assembly should come up with a date maximum. We have seen them push bills in one month, two months, three months come out with a date and say, we are guaranteeing Nigerians that by 2021, latest by June, that it will be amended. Because remember, it's a back and forth process. While the Senate passes, the House of Reps has to, pa has to also pass its own. Concurrent. They now have to concord, do a gavel to gavel before it's now taken to the president who has his own team that will now look at what is passed and express his grievances. Asian one said something. He said a lot of these problems can be solved if they, all of them can be assembled in the same room. But we know that it's going to be very difficult. Uh, the, the executive we always want, let's do our own review by ourselves, brainstorm and be, be at liberty to disagree with whatever is pushed. So why INEC has taken the initiative and set a date for the election? The National Assembly to, needs to live up to its responsibilities. Tell Nigeria when the first draft of the amended constitution in relation to the elections will be ready. That's true. So that by the time it comes, then we'll now know that if it gets... Remember what happened prior to the 2019 election okay. when the, the president of the Senate and the others, they amended it. It went to the president. The president said, no. We don't agree with some of this. By then, the election was already upon Nigeria. Exactly. So uh, uh, um, we understand we have Ezenwa back. Ezenwa, please, let me give you this opportunity to make some proposals on what to expect in the um, Electoral Act Amendment going forward. What would you love to see? You remember the dilemma we caught ourselves in 2015, where we understand that the card reader and, uh, is not supported by the law. So what are you looking at if we must get so, it right? Okay, so let's just simply support the card reader with law. It's, it's as simple as that. Remove all the ambiguities around uh, whether INEC can, you know, deploy whatever uh, te um, uh, technology it wants to, to advance. Put it in clear terms that smart card reader, permanent voter's card is now legal, legal in plain simple language that anybody can connect with that's number one number two we have seen the value of 
the, the C Pact uh, 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 that was introduced in Nasarawa and subsequently in Edo and Ondo. The, the management of results, management and retention of results has become much more transparent. Citizens can follow polling unit centric results in a way that inspires confidence. We need to infuse that into the law. But we cannot go electronic full scale because um, we are also, we, we have teledensity challenges in our country. Uh, when people talk about, um, you know, electronic voting, even the United States is not into full scale United, um, electronic voting. We, we should practice, we should remove the legal obstacles to electronic voting, but put in machinery to use electronic voting where possible and then begin to infuse it gradually. I think that that would be the way to go. We also need to be clear about resolutions, how to resolve electoral disputes. Uh, we are tinkering with 180 days, one, all of those issues, we can come to the table. And my, my, my friend Amadine was, was talking about how territorial, you know, how territorial the executive and in, because of the challenges of the past and the recency of the inability to resolve these challenges, you need to now be creative. And what is that creative thing? Government is not a, is not a, a conflictual relationship. It is cooperative. It, it has to cooperate. And now is that time to cooperate and see how you give Nigerians an electoral act that does not diminish the electoral expectations that the people want. So in coming into the room is to say, the SGF was there today at the inauguration of um, at the inauguration of the uh, committee. What you need to do is the SGF representing the executive and permanent secretaries from his office and the legal drafting committee, uh, uh, you know, folks within the National Assembly can sit down together and go through details, you know, and ensure that eventually what we are putting in will not have all those unnecessary um, bottlenecks and obstacles okay. that we have seen in the past. It's not rocket science. If we want to do something, we do it. We, okay. we, we go ahead and do it. When well, okay, we don't so want well. to do it, we hoist regime of excuses. The challenge for electoral reforms has been the fact that the National Assembly has not paid due attention to details. Okay. And those in the executive will always hinge on that to say, hey, take I'll it back, rework it. By the time you are working it, the time lapse and the time exigencies that I'm that gone. throws off will hinder our ability to move forward. So my sense is that we must have cooperation on electoral reform issues, executive and the legislature and civil society and every interested stakeholder must come together in a, a non-conventional manner to deal with those challenges and see how we resolve it. Thank you so much, Jason. I, I will come back to thank you. But let me quickly get your final take on this in 30 seconds. Um, what other proposals we want to add to what he said, or you want to delete some, some of the things he said? No, no, Ezenwa has said it all. It's not rocket science. If the executive and the legislature say that they want to ensure that the Electoral Act is amended, the constitution is on amended, time. on time it can be done. In fact, remember, that, remember the novel idea the last leadership of the Senate did, because they know that uh, amending the whole constitution is going to take a Herculean process. So they treated it in piecemeal, that this one regards election, let's handle this. Push it to the executive, let them sign. That's why a part of the, you heard that uh, the PIB that was uh, broken into th three different parts, they were able to push one part and sign it. So they can still do that okay. for the elections. Thank you so much, Amadinu, a senior correspondent with Plus TV Africa. And Ezen Wanwago, thank you for your time. Thank you for this insight. Trust me, the conversation has just started. From time to time, we'll be reaching out to you to give us some more solutions. Maybe by then, the protests would have ended and we'll have a better country that we can call our own. Thank you so much, Ezenwa. I appreciate you, Kay. Thank you for the opportunity. Yeah. And to our viewers, thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break now. And when we return, I'll be giving you my take. Please, don't go anywhere.
Here is my take, especially on the NSAS protest. Rather than seeing the protesters as, you know, going against your policy, see them as an opportunity to sell the country to them, to give them a sense of hope. Rather than seeing this country as a place to run away from, they have decided to fix this country by themselves. I advise everyone in government, this is not time to sponsor thugs against these protesters. I advise the overzealous police officers, this is not time to find a way of frustrating the protesters. The interest is for you and I. The interest is to get a better welfare for every police officer that is meant to protect us. We hope and sincerely hope that this protest will end with a song that we can say, Nigeria, we hail thee. And we are proud to call you our motherland. And that's my take on today's Plus Politics. Plus Politics returns tomorrow, same time, same station. I remain yours truly, Kayode Ladeinde, saying bye for now.